A few years ago, the prestigious Times Magazine ranked the 100 most influential people of the 20th century. This list includes prominent individuals who had the greatest influence on the formation of the century, leaders and revolutionaries, artists and performers, architects and scientists, thinkers and philosophers. There are only 10 women on the list and only one designer. We're talking, of course, about the incomparable Coco Chanel, who managed to make a real revolution in the fashion world. We'll talk about her in today's issue. The future world-famous designer, Gabrielle Bonheur Chanel, was born on August 19, 1883, in Samur in the French Loire Valley. Her parents, a market merchant and the daughter of a rural carpenter, were not married at that time, and this was their second daughter. The baby was born in the monastery, and she was given a name in honor of the nurse, Gabrielle, who was in labor. Coco Chanel's childhood was not a happy one. Her family struggled to break even. When her mother unexpectedly dies in 1895, her father moves to the neighboring town of Abazin and divides the family. He sends his sons to live on farms with the families of workers and his daughters to an orphan asylum. Gabrielle never saw her father again. In the orphan asylum, strict nuns looked after her and her sisters. Throughout her life, Coco will try to cope with her heartache, experiencing the grief of an abandoned child However, she will still continue to fervently love her father and proudly bear his surname, her only dowry, which after many years will begin to bring her huge income. Chanel remained in the orphan asylum until her adulthood. The experience Gabrielle gained in the orphanage significantly influenced her future life. It was the nuns who taught her to sew. The Barocco style in luxurious religious items and the restrained black and white gamut attracted Coco's attention and later served as sources of inspiration for creating fashionable masterpieces. At the same time, Gabrielle Bonheur Coco Chanel hated the orphan asylum uniform that she had to wear. Coco believed that all the girls became faceless in it. It was back then when she had a dream, to dress women beautifully. The wound received in childhood did not last long. Having become famous, Coco will begin to carefully hide her orphanhood from journalists and erase the nuns from memory. She will come up with other teachers, two wealthy buttoned-up old ladies, cousins of the late mother who allegedly took care of her. At the age of 18, Gabrielle left the orphan asylum, deciding to break out of poverty once and for all. Needlework skills helped Chanel get a seamstress position in a ready-made dress store in the town of Moulin. Moulin was a garrison town. Young officers often entered the atelier. They invited the girl to the local vaudeville, between the acts, the audience could participate in the performance, and soon Gabrielle was already on stage. At that time, such a future seemed to Chanel much more promising. Chanel's charm and sweetness quickly fascinated vaudeville visitors, and the songs Coco Rico and Qui Sound of Uco, which she performed, gave her the famous nickname Coco. Although Gabrielle herself, who loved to come up with the facts of her biography, insisted that she was called the way her father called her in childhood. In Moulin, she meets a French officer and a wealthy heir, Etienne Balsan. Coco never considered him as a candidate for husband. She was satisfied with the role of a kept mistress. She seized on this relationship as a chance to get out of poverty. A year later, Coco moved to Balsan's luxurious estate, living in the full guardianship of an officer. There, Chanel spent time studying riding and breaking of horses from the local stable. Very soon, she became a great rider. The former little orphan now adapted the life of the richest people in France. She became increasingly confident in herself, maintaining her individuality and sense of style, which she immediately began to pay special attention to. She was not attracted to the images of the ladies at that time. Therefore, she wore Etienne's things, riding pants, vests, and sports jumpers. At the same time, she begins to create unique hats, improving complex design. One of the Balsan's kept mistresses, seeing how Coco remade the purchased hat for herself, asks to do the same with her headdress. Soon, all Etienne's friends wear hats in the manner of Chanel. The success of such experiments prompts Gabrielle to think about her own store. With Balsan's permission, she occupies his apartments in Paris and continues to turn design ideas into reality. Coco became close to Etienne's friend, the English playboy Arthur Cape, who became the greatest love in the life of the great Mademoiselle. 
Arthur introduced her to bankers, politicians, financiers, introducing Coco to his social circle. Cape's support and money helped Chanel open the first boutique in Paris with the high-profile name Fashion Chanel on 21 Cambon Street in 1910. Coco's dream came true. A year later, she will move to house number 31 on the same street. The Chanel store is still located at this address. In 1913, in the city of Deauville, Coco opened another store, which quickly became popular. Chanel continued to expand her business, and two years later, her first fashion house in Biarritz opened. During the First World War, due to hostilities, textiles ended in warehouses. There was nothing to sew. Chanel's business acumen helps her make another breakthrough in the fashion industry. Coco begins to sew clothes from Jersey, fabric for men's long johns. New female shapes appear without an emphasis on the waist. Skirts are shortened to the very calf. According to Coco Chanel, visiting ladies looked inappropriate in uncomfortable outfits that were not suitable for relaxation in the resort town. Models from her collection were not constricted in movements and soft knitwear allowed to lead an active lifestyle. The sports line was diluted with blazers from flannels, jackets, sweaters, sea-style blouses, straight linen skirts and hats. The fashion designer radically changes her image. She cuts off luxurious curls and appears before the public with a boyish hairstyle. The style she created was later called simple luxury. In order to dress in the Chanel style, you need primarily taste and not a lot of money. But Gabrielle's clients had money and they gladly bought hats and clothes from the original fashion designer. Very soon, Coco's business became a phenomenon that was not before in fashion history. Chanel herself became the first tailor to enter high society, easily overcoming the status of servants. She managed to change public opinion about the designer's work, becoming a person of international caliber. According to Coco, she became the first woman to live the full life of her century. Chanel got what she dreamed of, fame and luxury. For such success, she paid in full, sacrificing her personal life. Both Etienne and Arthur loved Chanel, but were forced to marry aristocrats. Cape's marriage was unsuccessful. He returned to Chanel again and again. Their romance was interrupted on December 22, 1919. Arthur died in a car crash. Gabrielle took the loss of her loved one very heavily. Years later, she recalls that with the loss of Cape, she lost everything. Although she had many relationships after, she did not have such strong feelings for anyone else. In order to overcome the tragedy, the fashion designer focuses entirely on work. Around this time, Chanel met with the decorator artist Sert and his wife. It is they who get Coco into the world. She makes friends with artists Picasso and Dali, famous playwrights and poets, and she begins to engage in philanthropy and invests in ballet. In 1919, Chanel, together with Sergei Diaghilev, the Russian theatre professional, worked on costumes for Stravinsky's ballet. Chanel makes true friends with Diaghilev. Coco Chanel's personal life is also booming. In 1920, she met with a Russian emigrant, Dmitry Romanov, cousin of Tsar Nicholas II. A passionate romance ensues between them. Coco, being by then quite wealthy, rents a villa on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean for their meetings. Their affair did not last long, as in 1921, Dmitri married the daughter of an American billionaire to secure his future. However, thanks to this relationship, Russian motifs began to appear in the collections of Coco Chanel. For example, a coat on a sable lining or a shirt with hand embroidery. However, the most important thing that brought this acquaintance is the famous perfume Chanel No. 5. Dimitri introduced Coco to perfumer Ernest Beau. After meeting her, she came up with the idea of creating fragrance under her own name. She asks Beau to create a fragrance that smells like a woman, not like a rose. After a few months of hard work, Ernest creates a series of 30 samples. Among them, Chanel chooses the fifth fragrance, a composition of notes of jasmine, may rose, ylang ylang and sandalwood. It is it which will become the cult favorite Chanel No. 5. Coco always considered the number five a happy number. Her new collections always came out only on the fifth. Ironically, the fragrance chosen by Coco was the result of a laboratory error. In the used formula, the dose of aldehyde, a synthetic opponent that gave the aroma that very flair, was exceeded. 
Together with the Wertheimer brothers, Coca creates the Chanel Parfum Company, from which she receives stocks of 10%. In 1921, the Chanel No. 5 perfume was presented to the general public. As an advertisement, Chanel gives the first 100 vials to the most influential and beautiful women. And after Marilyn Monroe publicly declares that a few drops of Chanel is the only thing she dresses into for the night, the perfume gets sold out in millions. Today, this perfume is still considered a symbol of femininity and the embodiment of classics. It was the bottle with famous perfume that had the Chanel trademark first appear in 1925. These were two intertwined letters C, one of which is depicted in its original form and the other is its mirror reflection. Many believe that the symbol of luck depicted by Vrubel served as prototype for the Coco trademark. According to another version, two letters C are the initials of Coco Chanel. Chanel did not just create clothes, she changed the style of her contemporaries. In such a way, she made suntan fashionable. She made a boast of it in Cannes. Coco proved that aristocratic pale is no longer a trend. Millions of women of privileged circles followed the example of the couturier. The turning point in the fashion world was the presentation of Coco's small black dress. It was an outfit originally from Chanel's childhood. The pupils of the orphanage where she grew up wore black dresses with a small white collar. The dress was made of a black crepe X-shaped silhouette with long sleeves. Flawless proportions, aesthetic simplicity of the cut, refinement of the fabric, restrained color scheme. Coco turned the color of mourning and poverty into a symbol of elegance and taste. Couturier suggested decorating the outfit with a thread of pearls and elegant boats. In addition, she came up with trouser suits, which, as it turned out, could emphasize the beauty of the woman figure just as well as men's. Each new collection of clothes and accessories from Chanel was popular. The work of the fashion designer was praised by critics as well. In 1923, Chanel was offered to enter the upper strata of the British aristocracy. It was an elite group that included figures such as Winston Churchill, Duke of Westminster, and Edward, Prince of Wales. Chanel charmed the richest Duke of Westminster, Hugh Gronsware. He gave Chanel extravagant jewels, expensive art, a house in the prestigious London Mayfair district, and even a plot of land on the French Riviera. During their joint trip to Scotland, she is inspired by tweed jackets and woolen sweaters of the Duke, vests of his servants, and headdresses of sailors. Therefore, one of the most iconic things of the fashion house appears. Despite a long relationship, Coco refused to offer her hand and heart. There are many duchesses, and there is only one Coco Chanel. She did not want to sacrifice the fashion house for the sake of title and marriage, and remained a great mademoiselle. The Duke's affair with Chanel lasted 10 years. Meanwhile, her emperor was growing. Chanel became the first couturier to support the film industry, thus setting the trend for the coming decades. It all began in the 1930s when Sam Goldwyn, one of the most influential people in Hollywood, invited Chanel to work in films. Coco was supposed not only to create clothes for United Artists films, but also to dress actors in their daily lives. By doing so, Americans could be aware of the latest Paris trends. Under the terms of the contract, Chanel was obligated to come to America twice a year and create outfits in a studio specially created for her. However, Coco did not like working under someone's leadership. After staying in the United States for only two weeks, she flew back and sewed clothes for cinema already in her homeland. Chanel took part in the work on only three films. The first was the comedy, Tonight or Never, by Mervyn Leroy. The main role in it was played by silent film star Gloria Swanson. Great Mademoiselle sewed unique costumes for Swanson, among which a black floor-skimming dress with wing sleeves was especially distinguished. Two other films, the musical Palmy Days and the comedy Two Girls on Broadway, which served as the inspiration for the film How to Marry a Millionaire with Marilyn Monroe. Chanel dressed the heroines of the film in combination dresses, trumpet skirts, and white blouses with a bow. After working on these films, Chanel decided to terminate the contract. Samuel Goldwyn did not dissuade her from it. Chanel's innovative and elegant clothes did not meet the standards of Hollywood glamour of the 30s. Actresses of the time had to be seen as sexy. They were supposed to cause women envy, admiration, and a desire to imitate. For Coco, this was unacceptable. She called Hollywood the capital of bad taste. 
However, soon Chanel began to collaborate with European cinema, which was closer to her in spirit. The Chanel empire reached its height, but difficult years awaited the designer. By the 40th, Gabrielle Chanel had five stores on Cambon Street in Paris. Her fashion house had 4,000 employees. With the beginning of the fascist occupation, she closed them all, with the exception of a small perfume shop. During the war, only the Nazis and their wives could afford to buy spirits. Chanel's circle of communication changed again. In her life, another test happens. The only nephew of the fashion designer, André Palais, gets captured by the Germans. Chanel tries all the methods to free him and finally finds a solution. With the help of her friend, Baron von Dinklage, an employee of the German consulate, she returns her nephew. She starts a relationship with the Baron. At that time, she was 56 years old. The relationship with high circles of the Nazis led to acquaintance with Walter Schellenberg, the head of Hitler's foreign intelligence and personal assistant to Heinrich Himmler. He offered Chanel participation in the operation called Fashion Hat, the information about which is still considered classified. Taking advantage of his connections, Chanel was supposed to entice Churchill to a meeting where they would try to convince him to make peace on conditions favorable to the Nazis. The operation went down the tube. In the summer of 1944, France was liberated. German officers were interrogated, searching for accomplices. During interrogations, Schellenberg reported all the details of Operation Fashion Hat and claimed that Coco was its key figure. In August 1944, Coco was handed an arrest warrant, calling her a Nazi spy. Remaining true to herself, she took a purse, gloves, and calmly went to the station. Thanks to her friendship with a British politician, she avoided arrest, but was strongly recommended to leave France. In such a way, 61-year-old Chanel moves to Switzerland. She spends almost 10 years in Switzerland. When the wasp waists and lower skirts again come into fashion, all these things that Chanel fought with, the couturier decides to make a return. In 1954, she began preparations for perhaps the most important collection in her life. She focuses all her attention on post-war models. Each dress is rechecked several times. Work goes around the clock. On February 5th, at the age of 73, Coco Chanel returns to the fashion world. The display of models is mercilessly criticized. In the press, her resonant return is called a fiasco. Despite the opinion of French critics, the collection is accepted enthusiastically in America, and Chanel regains her former glory. The tweed suit from Coco, a narrow skirt and jacket decorated with braid and overhead pockets, becomes the hallmark of a lady with good taste. Back in the pre-war years, Chanel presented a handbag inspired by soldier bags. Her thin shoulder belt allowed hands to be kept free. After her return, Chanel updated the design in February of 1955, creating the model 2.55, named after the date of its creation. Over time, France forgot the sins of Coco's war years, and then Europe fell to her feet. Chanel's house has become bigger and more successful than ever. Coco was simply idolized. The fashion house was worn by world celebrities, Grace Kelly, Elizabeth Taylor, and Brigitte Bardot. Even Jacqueline Kennedy appeared in public in Chanel's outfits. In the late 1960s, Chanel's house turned into an international fashion empire with huge capital. The great Mademoiselle ruled her empire. After hard work, Coco often rested in her country house, enjoying fresh air, freedom, and loneliness. Chanel was fond of fishing, bred flowers, took care of homeless animals, and was engaged in horse riding. She always strictly monitored the daily routine, trying to sleep for at least seven to eight hours. Coco called alcohol and overeating enemies of beauty. Until old age, she remained fragile and slender, preferring a diet of vegetables, fruits, and fish. One of Chanel's few unhealthy weaknesses was constant smoking. The great Mademoiselle created a whole philosophy and image of a new woman. Despite the fact that Coco had a lot of money, in the twilight of her life, her wardrobe was represented by only three outfits. However, these outfits could be only envied by the queens, before they were luxurious. Despite all the successes and a carefully polished image, Coco felt increasingly lonely. The men she loved died long ago. She never married and did not start a family, and was completely dependent on the sleeping pills containing morphine which helped her sleep. 
With the 60s, the level of popularity of Coco's collections decreased as the designer refused to follow a new trend, fashion for miniskirts. She spent the last seven years of her life in the workshop. She lived near her workplace at the Ritz Hotel. Coco Chanel died on January 10, 1971, from a heart attack, on Sunday, the only day of the week when Mademoiselle did not work. In the last minutes, there was a maid with her. Giving herself the last shot of morphine in the leg, Coco said, this is how people die, you know. The designer was buried in Lausanne in Switzerland. The grave of Coco Chanel is located in the cemetery of Bois de Vaud. On the upper part of Coco's tombstone are carved five of her faithful patrons, lions. Leo is not only a guardian of secrets and the spirit of the Chanel house, but also a symbol of the tireless thirst for life and faith in her good fortune of Mademoiselle Coco herself, which to this day remains an example of elegance and impeccable taste. For 10 years, the Chanel company existed without a creative director. Former fame began to fade and the brand begins to lose its customers. In 1983, German designer Karl Lagerfeld was appointed to the post of chief designer of the fashion house. He changed the brand style, adding modern design and his own touches. New details appeared. Unprocessed edge, furs, silk sleeves and cuffs made of interwoven threads. Lagerfeld experimented with sleeve and skirt length, heel height, hairstyles, while observing the leading line of the brand, creating practical, elegant and comfortable clothes. The new owner of the house also expanded the product range, starting to produce watches, sunglasses and cosmetics. After Lagerfeld's death in 2019, his assistant Virginie Villard took over as creative director of Chanel. Chanel's style is an elegant jacket, practical and beautiful trouser suits, and, of course, a small black dress. Simple luxury, elegant lines and natural materials. These are things that fans appreciate. The legendary house regularly delights the fashion world with new collections, and it is not going to stop. In the fashion world, Coco Chanel was ingenious and independent star. Everything she did was a departure from the outdated past, since the designer constantly wanted to improve the lives of women with the help of her creations. Her legacy is not only the famous perfume, small black dress and handbag on the chain, jewelry, women's trousers and tanning and vest fashion. It showed millions of women how to be elegant and classy while allowing themselves to live comfortably and freely. This spirit of free woman still lives in all vintage and modern Chanel lines.